Okay, so now I'm answering questions from a P2 specimen paper for International A-Level. Um, up to now there have been no exams, no actual exams for the P2 because the first session will be in June 2019, okay, a couple of months from now. So basically um, I'm just answering questions from the specimen paper upon request from my students. I set this as a mock exam for them. Um, a short while ago, so some questions, some people are asking certain questions. Now, one of them is question six. He's asking about six part C, but I'll do part A and B as well. Now, six part A. It says sketch the curve with equation y equals a to the power of x, and a is greater than one. Okay. So examples of this would be y equals two to the power of x, y equals three to the power of x. For example, y equals ten to the power of x. All of these have a particular shape, okay? If a was less than 1, then it would change, like y equals a half x and so, it would have a different shape. So, y equals a to the power of x would have some sort of shape like this, okay? It goes through 1 on the y-axis. Okay, it always goes through 1 on the y-axis, never hits the x-axis, and it always passes through 1 on the y-axis. Okay, so it's an exponential curve, which it, it rises slowly, then as soon as it hits the y-axis at 1, it starts to increase, you know, a lot faster. So it's exponentially increase, exponential curve, y equals a to the power of x. Okay, so that's perfectly fine with that. If a was less than 1, then for example it would be a half x, then that would be something like 2 to the power of minus a half, or sorry, 2 to the power of minus x. Now that would be like a reflection of this in the in the y-axis. It would look like this, okay, which is something that models decay. All right, so that, that's why they have a is greater than 1. When a is greater than 1, it will always have this type of shape, okay? So that's answer to 6a. Now 6b, they have given us a table of values, all right, for x and y, for the curve y equals 3 to the power of x plus x, the values of y are given to two decimal places where needed, okay, so we got to use the trapezium rule with all the values of y given in the table, all right, to obtain an estimate for the integral of uh, 3x plus x dx between 2 and 4. So basically, an estimate for the area under this curve between 2 and 4. Okay, we're not actually able to integrate this function with the knowledge that we have up to P2 in integration. Um, so we're going to use the trapezium rule to estimate the area under the curve between 2 and 4. Okay, so we have all the values given in the table, so it's simply just a case of applying the trapezium rule. Now the trapezium rule, okay, so we can say that an estimate of the integral 3x plus x between 2 and 4, okay, is going to be given by. Now, we the, the trapezium rule start, states that you have h over 2 times, okay, and then you have y0 plus 2 times y1 plus until you get to y n okay something like that now basically what it's stating is the h is the distance between the parallel sides in the trapezium okay now when you have something like this okay the curve okay whatever it looks like um this is zero so whatever it looks like it will Maybe it'll have a shape like that. Okay, that's we don't we don't exactly know what the shape is going to be, but that's two and four. We're trying to find the area under this curve by splitting up into a number of um, trapeziums. So what they've done is they've split up into a number of trapeziums, and they've taken the ordinates from two to four, and in between every point four, okay, they have taken a value. So every point four, so it's two, two point four. 
2.8, then 3.2, then 3.6. So that you can see that the trapezium formed here, okay, its width is 2.4. That width is a vertical height because it's the distance between the parallel sides. So the 2.4 here, okay, this, um, sorry, this 0 0.4 here, not 2.4, the 0 0.4 here, which is the width of each of these, is the width of the trapezium. It's the, it's the vertical height, so it's h. So your h here is 0 0.4. And that can be found by just simply looking at the gaps in the x values, okay? So 0 0.4 is your h, divide it by 2, and then we're going to um, use the trapezium. So for the trapezium, what you'll notice is the trapezium that you have, okay, the first trapezium, to find the area of the first trapezium, you have 0 0.4 divided by 2, okay, so it's the distance between the parallel sides, divided by 2 times the sum of the parallel sides. So you're going to use this length, which is y0, and this length, which is y1, okay, to find the area of this trapezium. To find the area of the next trapezium, you're going to use 0 0.4 over 2 times y1 times y2. So you're using y1 and y2, y1 again. And y2 will be used again in this trapezium. And y3 will be used again in this trapezium. So all of these ordinates will be used twice. So all of these, okay, will be used twice except for the last one. So this number 11 represents how high each of these parallel sides is. So for the first one, 2, this is like, if that's 2, that's 11. Okay, if that's 2.4, that's 16.37. Okay, so you can see that these heights here, okay, which are the length of the parallel sides, are represented by the y values. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the first and the last ordinate once only, because there will be the beginning and the end of the first and the last trapezium. And everything else is a side in the trapezium before and the trapezium after, so they're all going to be used twice. That's where that comes from in the formula. So you're going to have 11 plus 85 plus two times the rest of them. Okay, now I'll just get rid of this so that we can write what we need to write. So you've got two times 16.37, and you've got plus 24.47, plus 36.83, and plus 55.80. And that should give us our answer for part B. So let's see what it gives us. So you have 0 0.4 divided by 2. Okay, times, you got 11 plus 85, the first and the last, plus 2 times, and you got 16.37 plus 24.47 plus 36.83 okay plus 55.80 close that bracket and the other bracket and we're left with our answer as 72.588 72.588 to one decimal place at 72.6 and there we have the answer to part B and I'll do part C on the next video. Okay, thank you.